Okay. I don't want this to be a crying video. I want it to be a celebration of life, really. And I need a tissue. I'm JBK, and in this video, I'm going to be making a DIY memorial frame to honor our late beloved pooch, Ginny, who we had to send to the Rainbow Bridge about five months ago. I love this pooch. Oh, you smell so good. It didn't take long after Ginny's death before I decided I wanted to create some kind of shrine to remember her by. But the fact is, my family and I live in a two bedroom apartment in Brooklyn, New York, and there is not a lot of extra room here for something like that. And I happened to be taking a walk one day and saw this box frame on someone's stoop. They were giving it away and it all just came together for me that I could use this frame to create a lovely collage, if you will, to honor her memory. These are the items that I'm gonna include in the frame. About a teaspoon of her ashes, which is gonna go into this little plastic box. I embellished it with a green sequin to symbolize grass, which she loved to roll around in and play fetch on. She was from South Virginia and was a country dog at heart. And then this butterfly symbolizes that she was a girl and that her spirit was released. The remnants of one of her favorite plush squeaky toys, a football. This was such a find. And she just loved playing fetch with it and squeaking it. It gave her so much pleasure. Are you enjoying your football? The squeaking drove my daughter crazy. Get it. Get it. Even though she did eventually pull the stuffing out of this, we kept it because she still had fun chasing it. it still smells a little bit like her too. We have this piece of yarn that my daughter braided in colors that make her think of Ginny. And this yarn symbolizes the several Afghans that we had that she adored. She loved a green and white afghan that my great grandma Pearl knitted. She got to get very close with an afghan that our late friend Heather crocheted for my daughter when she was born in 2009. And then my friend Sarah gave us just this magnificent green and teal and turquoise afghan that she knitted over a year ago. We don't have room to put an afghan into this frame, but we can certainly put a little yarn in there. This is the first clicker I ever bought to train Ginny with and the only clicker I ever needed to train her with. She just really enjoyed training. She enjoyed the stimulation. She enjoyed the reward. Good girl. We apex together with the tidy up trick. Tidy up. Where she learned to pick up her toys from around the room and bring them back to a basket on the floor and drop them in. I also taught her how to get into this giant LL Bean tote bag that used to totally scare her. There you go. Okay. But I used the clicker to teach her to get in this bag so that I could carry her on my shoulder when I needed to, which was really handy if we had to jump into a cab. In 0.1 mile, turn left. I have so many good memories of doing clicker training with Ginny. It just made us really, really close. Good girl. One of Ginny's favorite treats was Cabot Vermont Extra Sharp 
cheddar cheese. I love this cheese. My daughter loves this cheese. My sister loves this cheese. My husband likes the cheese. And Ginny, oh, she loved this cheese. Huge smile come over her face and she was just looking at me so expectantly. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What do you need me to do just so I can get more of that cheese? Pick a cup. Nicely done, okay, you followed where it went, good. We're gonna include this sign, which my daughter made. I adopted Ginny in April of 2007, and I was told she was eight weeks old. So we just went eight weeks back from April, and we picked Valentine's Day because we knew we could always remember that date. So we have Valentine's Day, and then September 7th of last year when she passed. I love this photo of me holding Ginny. She's looking in the camera and her ears are pointed out. It just shows how well we fit together. And I like that her paws are all relaxed over my arm. There's a nice picture of my daughter and Ginny on our couch. My daughter looks super happy to have Ginny all snuggled up against her there. And Here's another picture of her snuggling up with my husband. It was something that she did with my husband. When he put out his legs like that on the couch, she often would just lay on them and she was just like snug in between his legs. This is Ginny in Red Hook. When I started the YouTube channel, this was something that I put at the very top. Wake up, hug dog, have a good day. That is a field behind a big box store. We'd take a nice long walk there, and then I'd let her off leash and we would play frisbee and fetch, which is one of her favorite things to do. And I think that is evident by how she looks in this photograph. This is a video still from footage that became the first trailer for our YouTube channel. If I was holding Ginny up and showed her herself in the mirror, she, never seemed to see anything. But I remember that day when we were shooting, I think she could see herself on the phone and it really fascinated her. You could see her gray beard, which is why the channel was called Ginny the Gray Bearded Pup. This is a picture of Ginny with the football on our bed and that rat terrier ear just sticking way out. And I like this because I think I was showing her a picture of herself and she actually looks like she's looking at the phone. You know, this was taken probably like three months after she had been diagnosed with canine lymphoma. My friend Gail just happened, you know, we took a nice walk together and then we were visiting on the stoop and she just took some really lovely pictures of me and Ginny. They really kind of capture the spirit of our relationship with each other, which was just one of a lot of love and caring for each other. And I think we were both really, really in tune with each other. And this picture shows Ginny with her happy face on. A quintessential picture of Ginny smiling. She's out in our downstairs neighbor's backyard. That's not real grass. That's just fake rollout turf, but she didn't care. She had a lot of fun back there. It was her last summer with us. We got to spend a lot of time out there and that was just kind of a good convergence of fates. Got the frame and the photographs and the items. And then we have some push pins. Okay, Jenny. Help guide me in the process of making this memorial for you. Let's get started and see what happens. Oh, you know what would be so cool is to make a heart out of this. So like if I could do that and then that, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yes. I am planning to use this clicker for future dog training work. I want it to just be somewhere where I can just easily 
take it out. There we go. There we go, okay. All that's left is this football. And I think maybe I could cut a panel off. So let me do that. Yes, Mr. Football, sorry, but you're gonna have to get cut down even more. Let me do that. I have it out. All right, I'm gonna start putting pins in, I think. Pretty good. That is a nice piece of collage work there. Well, her ashes keep moving around, but I do think this came out really nicely. And I think it will live very nicely in this corner. It's not really a corner. In this area that was really Ginny's nook. So I think there's a lot of her energy and her spirit over here. I'm literally sitting <laughs> in her bed right now. That's right. Straight. You really don't need much to create a little shrine or memorial for your pet. Just a little area that you designate and Really all you need is a picture of them and maybe an object that was meaningful to them and to you. Candle, uh, incense, flowers, whatever feels the most meaningful to you. And to just honor their memory. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Can you ready to go back? Ready to go back home and have some dinner? <laughs>